California adopted the final regulations for cap and trade uh, in 2011. The program actually launches January 1, 2012, but the first auctioning of allowances won't take place until mid-year. So we're taking the first part of the year to put in place the tracking and monitoring systems and get an oversight committee in place and all that sort of stuff so that when the market actually begins in the second half of the year, we feel that we can be very confident that we're prepared for any possible kind of abuse or cheating or failure or other thing that could go wrong. You know, we've anticipated every possibility and we feel pretty good about the fact that uh, this program is going to work. That is, it's actually going to reduce uh, emissions and it's going to do it in a way that is affordable and hopefully basically not noticeable by the average person. That's kind of the idea. It's invisible. At the moment, because we're uh, trying to be sure of every element of the program, we're not allowing any offsets that aren't developed in California under protocols that we've already approved in advance. So it's a very, very rigidly controlled program. But because the whole purpose of this uh, effort is to reduce global warming, and it is a global problem, we also recognize a need to engage with other countries that are interested in similar things. And we particularly appreciate the fact that everything we could do to reduce our emissions through changing fuels, changing vehicles, uh, cleaning industry, and so forth, um, won't do the job unless we also are taking action to stop deforestation, which is going on in other parts of the world. So we've been active participants from the very beginning in an effort called the uh, Governor's uh, Climate Action Task Force, whose purpose is to develop a, a group of states that are all interested in coming up with ways to uh, really improve forest management, to generate funds to do it, but to do it in a way that is absolutely uh, rigorous and supports other values that these states have, not just to be able to generate funds to help uh, protect their forests, but also to help uh, develop the economies of the communities in those regions in ways that are sustainable. So this is a very interesting and important effort. Uh, we're only one player in it, but because California has a reputation as being a leader on environmental policy, and because we do have the possibility that in the future the offsets that are developed could be one way of generating some of the funds that are needed, uh, people have been very uh, interested in having California be part of this process. I think eventually it will be, but I think it'll be beyond California. I, I think California, even though we're a big state and uh, we have a large economy, we would not be enough to sustain uh, the kinds of forestry programs that we're talking about with our colleagues from Africa, from Brazil, uh, Peru, uh, you know, Indonesia. It's going to take a much larger program to do that and frankly I don't think offsets alone are going to do it. I think we're going to need to have other reasons why people are interested in investing in these kinds of programs and what's exciting is that people I think today at the forestry uh, day at, at the uh, conference of parties, everybody's been talking about the fact that uh, these programs need to have multiple benefits. They have to have multiple purposes. If you're going to get um, local communities, states, national governments involved and interested, if the private sector is really going to step in with the kinds of hundreds of millions of dollars or even billions of dollars that are going to be needed, it's going to take more than just the motivation of creating offsets for a cap and trade program to do that. It's going to take some sort of a commitment to international development that's clean development. So that's, that's where the opportunities are and uh, it's exciting to hear that so many people uh, from various parts of the world have come to the same conclusion, which is that money from red programs is uh, useful, uh, it may be important, but it's never going to be enough in and of itself to motivate people to do the right thing to protect the forests.